So how are we finding London? It's pretty great. I love London. One of my favorite cities. Have you been here before or? I actually lived here from when I was like six months old to like uh, on and off like six or seven. So yeah, I've been here quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> So have to ask, what's it like working on one of the best looking shows on TV in that it's got one of the best looking casts on TV? Um, you know, it feels pretty darn good, <laughs> actually. Uh, looking at all the beautiful people on our set and our crew is actually pretty good looking too. So, uh, yeah, it's all but a blessing, really. Yeah, that's, uh, but it's accidental, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. What's it been like? Because obviously John Barrowman's come on in season three as a series regular. Obviously he was on before. Um, how's that been like for you working with him and all you guys as well? Because his role has kind of expanded a lot and you've had a lot to work with the season with him. Working with John is probably my favourite, but it's probably the crew's least favourite because we have <laughs> the least amount of work done. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a wild one having him on side. It's the best. Yeah, he, for me... Um, he just changes up the, the energy of the air. It just becomes like we're in grade school having fun again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally, yeah. He's all like, he's like, we have a lot of fun to work with him. Like, he, like he's singing and dancing, you know, like yeah. entertain, like even if you're, if, you're not, if you're not shooting. So that's great. And what did you think about that kind of big reveal then at the end with him being now in the place of Raz al Ghul? I mean, it's pretty cool getting to play his daughter, so, I mean, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was pretty, pretty awesome, to say the least. Will that make you heir to the demon, so you could become one, the next Razagul as well? I actually never even thought about that. <laughs> Whoa, bomb dropped. Um, who knows? I mean, uh, all I can think of right now is that Thea's just trying to figure out what's happening to her, or not happening to her, since she has been resurrected from the Lazarus pit. Your characters um, really expanded the season, and obviously you killed Sarah, uh, Katie's character, and now that she's coming back of uh, Legends of Tomorrow, yeah. could we see your character maybe go across to that show and see that she's alive and takes a bit of the guilt away from you? I mean, with the uh, all the series that have come out of, of Arrow, from The Flash to now Legends to, I mean, there's probably going to be an infinite number of more eventually. Um, there's all that possibility just wrapped into it. That's the reason why we've been able to do that, and it makes it so... It, there's just so many options of what could happen along those lines. I can't say anything for, for sure, because I honestly don't even know the true, actual answer, but there's always hopes and options out there, really. How long do you think Arrow can run for? And we're about to go into season four. And would you, do you think he'll stay for the, the long haul if Thea survives? Um, I mean, I hope she survives. Uh, You've come back once. I, I think, I think, <laughs> once, yeah, I've come back put to life once already. And I think that once, you know, she got her, her suit, I think that might have solidified her a bit, um, which is, feels really nice. Um, but, yeah, uh, I would happily stay a, a part of the show, and I think everybody would. We, we're all a pretty happy family. We think we luck the heck out working with each other. Arrow is a very action driven show, so very physically demanding. How is it like to kind of cope with that, to cope with the kind of like the hardcore action stuff you guys gonna have to get involved with? Well, we have amazing stunt doubles, incredible, <laughs> incredible stunt doubles, and uh, insurance clauses written into our contracts that make it so we can't do a huge chunk of the stuff that even some of us want to, but um, it's definitely a, a physical challenge at all times to keep up and to, to make it look like we can, you know, uh, move fluidly in between the little cuts that we do get to do as well as um, looking like we can actually are in physical enough shape to pull the stuff off. Because, you know, if you got a flab sticking out your belly, you wouldn't think that somebody's going to punch it and it'd be rock hard. <laughs> I, think, I think that the action actually, um, the physical stuff is the easiest part compared to the emotional yeah. stuff. Um, you know, having to go there, it's like, it's, it's, after doing an emotional, after doing a physical scene, I'm good. I could do that all day. But after doing one of these emotionally, psychologically meaty scenes, um, I'm pretty drained. Well, you've had a very emotional season, obviously, your character lost the son and everything like that. And you've used to have only had one season to get us to like your characters and love the characters. Was that tough or scary, thinking you've got one season to do this? I didn't even think about that. I was just taking it episode by episode, but every single, every single episode, um, you know, you just try to give as truthful 
uh, a, a performance as possible. And um, yeah, they, they gave us all a lot of very um, challenging, psychologically and mentally, emotionally challenging um, moments. Mm -hmm. Focusing on that element, what was it like um, in the final scenes with both of yourselves characters on Amanda Power, um, when yourself has got the mask of Katana on and yourself are fighting against each other? You know, for me, when I heard the news that Maceo was gonna go at the hands of um, Katana, I mean, I thought, I thought that was brilliant. I thought that, um, you know, I'm a huge Shakespeare fan, and um, the reason why I love this show because it, it parallels the, the the profound depth of you know Shakespeare, and um, you know that's something that happens. You know? um, so yeah, for me it was it was pretty cool. Um, when I heard about it, I was. I mean, I knew it's gonna happen someday. But I, I had a feeling it's gonna it's gonna come in, but I was like, I was really sad and like on on the set, I was a bit upset <laughs> before I'm actually. <laughs> yeah, it was sad. Is there any possibility if you two appear in next season? Obviously, your character's dead, but there's always that flashback opportunity, and you're still alive, luckily, so you can go along. So, is there been any talks about next season appearing? Um, Mark has told me don't make any plans. I'm like, oh great, I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm, I think it's, well first off, when he called me to tell me about the fact that Maceo was gonna die before, oops, spoiler. Um, <laughs> it's already edge, you find gonna, it. was gonna uh, go before the end of the season, um, well by the finale. Um, he just seemed real nervous and apprehensive. I was talking to me and I was like, hey man, you know, I, I get the sense that you're, you're a little nervous tell, sharing this information with me. Um, you know, I, I'm just a huge fan of the story, of the show itself, and um, the fact that it's been going on this long, my character has gone on this long was just uh, was just a surprise. So I knew at some point this was going to happen. Um, and he says, I said, well, you know, like you, I could use a vacation. So <laughs> um, this is good news for the story and my vacation and he says well don't make any plans <laughs> so obviously all of you now have like immersed yourself in the world of arrow um but were any of you kind of aware of the characters beforehand or were you like ever you read any comic books or stuff like that i grew up as a as a bit of a dc nerd so i really had a f profound appreciation for coming onto the show um and I, I had heard drops of the potential of anything along the lines of Speedy Arsenal or Red Arrow being like just from the get go. And in the pilot, it was written that uh, he said Speedy. Um, so it was just a huge, massive Easter egg for myself, let alone like everybody else when it came out. Um, but you know, three years was a bit of a long time waiting for it to happen. <laughs> um, but I understand why it all happened that way because of the trajectory and building up the origins. She needed to go from this point to rock bottom to build back up again, which is what they've done with like almost everybody's character. Really, they've just broken them down to the point where they have no choice but to go up or to the dark, like to bring the origins of these comic book characters to life. Speaking of comic books and, and superheroes, we've, we've got a lot of superhero movies coming out now from both Marvel and DC, and we've got a lot of TV series. I mean, you know, <coughs> DC's got several on the go, we've got Supergirl starting later in the year. Um, Marvel have got a couple, they're bound to come up with some more. Do you think there's a possibility of superhero overload? Do you think audiences <coughs> might eventually tire of too many superhero shows um, and movies? I'm, I don't really see it happening. We hope not. We hope not. I, I mean, there was that you know that period of time where there was just a like slew of Batmans and Supermans coming out. I mean, it wasn't as many as this right now, but there was still that period of time. And if anything, people were like, "Where did it all go? And why wasn't it good enough?" <laughs> but well, I think, if anything, the world in reality needs the morality tale of our superhero stories. We mm. need that. I mean, especially with things that are going on today. I mean, we need that sense of hope and, um, you know, uh, do the right thing and wherever you can protect people who need protecting. And, you know, it's very inspirational for me.
Yeah, it's, it's a fairly good message to be putting out there. I mean, aside from the, the villains and stuff and what they're doing, I, mean, I wouldn't tell anybody here to go become Malcolm Merlin and kill 503 <laughs> people, but I would say, totally, you know, if you wanted to protect people, and like, I'm not saying suit up either, but <laughs> people can do that in their own ways. Like, we can all stick together, be protective, and, and work as, as a human connected unit. Talking about dressing up, um, obviously at Comic Con, what's it like seeing people dressed up? Similar that your characters are from the TV show and everything like that. I actually uh, went to a Comic Con in Atlantic City last weekend and for the first time I saw a uh, cosplay version of Speedy with my haircut, everything like perfect, like right after the finale. It was the day after the finale aired and then that happened and she was all the way in the back of the panel and I could just see it from the corner of my eye and I just told her to stand up and I saw her outfit and I started crying <laughs> in the middle of the whole crowd because it was just the, the coolest thing that's ever happened. Customers I mean, do get quite obsessed with the outfits, I will I mean, say. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. I, I get obsessed with it. I'm sure all of us, like, I mean, mm -hmm. your outfit, hers is insane. Um, that mask is amazing. I mean, I, I love the whole, like, co I mean, costume designer's work yeah. from Aro. Like, she, she's amazing. She's amazing. She does such an amazing job. And she also asked me, like, you know, as a, as a point of, I mean, because I want to grow up in Japan. So they asked me, like, is that really, like, you know, truthful? Or, like, what do you think? And she researched about it. And she's, it's really nice, yeah. And it's. Yeah, I really love my costume. <laughs> yeah. yeah. so like, wow! Like, I saw, we yeah, actually yeah, we saw each other's. After, like she was just finishing her fitting for the uh -huh. first time, and I was just about to try mine on for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I just remember <laughs> seeing hers, and I was like, "Oh, what? No! <laughs> Damn, that's gonna be way cooler than mine." <laughs> and I was waiting, oh. like, you know, after I finished fitting, I was like watching, like from like you know, <laughs> you're from watching me change. Oh, <laughs> <that's cool. laughs> Is there any specific character from the DC universe that you'd be excited to see? Arrow. I always bring like whenever I because I've had that question quite a few times today in the last couple of weeks and just uh, it, pertaining to all the, the movies that are being made and stuff like that in the comic book world it's also taking a side from the, the, t the TV shows because we had uh, the Suicide Squad and these things inside of it Argus we were going really heavily into that for a minute and then I mean, something must have come down from DC or some some higher up above that said, no, you must cease and desist because we're going to make it into a movie and we can't have anybody spoil that idea. And we did get to see that little, like, pigtail and the Argus uniform and the little treat of a Harlequin, and then it just got ripped away. So if, if we could actually have Harlequin on the show, that'd be amazing, but it's never going to happen. Well, then, what would you like to see going? What would you like to see going ahead for Speedy now, your superhero character? And would you like to see um, Stephen return as Green Arrow? I mean, I think uh, I, I think that Thea would very much appreciate having her brother back in her life. Um, even though she's very happy that he, he's running off um, with the woman of his dreams right now. And he's very happy, but I think she definitely needs him too. Um, and uh, for her future in season four, man, I just, yeah, I hope that she keeps wearing that costume as much as possible and maybe gets a yellow one with a cape or something. I don't know. <laughs> do you think we'll see more crossover episodes with The Flash as well? Would you like to do some more? Uh, I would love to do that stuff, but uh, the, the writers love to keep us all very much in the dark, and they don't really want to tell me much about it. I mean, obviously there wasn't anything of me in season three crossing over, but there's a bunch of possibilities, especially now that the yeah. Legends of Tomorrow and everything like that, there's always the options and stuff, but again, like they... I didn't even know what my suit looked like until I tried it on and I mean I'm just teasing about the yellow cape. I'm just really wanting it. They have not confirmed anything about it. <laughs> How far ahead do you get the scripts? Uh... God, a couple of days before we start shooting, like we're probably so gonna get, get an episode by episode, episode by episode, wow. and we're probably gonna get we start shooting season four July thirteenth. I'm gonna go ahead and ballpark saying that I'm not gonna see the script till the tenth. <laughs> All three of you in a battle royale, which character wins? <laughs> I would probably lose. <laughs> I'm the smallest. Well, we already know now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Of course she wins. She wins in the costume and she wins in life. So where is Nanda Pal back? Because it seems to be about ten minutes outside Starling. <laughs> where is Nanda Pal back in the show? No, yeah, it's next door. <laughs> it literally is just <laughs> it's like a Starling City, Nana Parvet, then Central I, City. I you got to go through Nana Parvet. You know, the City. League of Assassins is a. Um, uh, it's steeped in middle the Middle East somewhere. So 
that's where it is. Somewhere. Just seems to be about 10 minutes from wherever anyone needs to be. You know, <laughs> it's just a really fast jet. Cool. <laughs> I think on the subject of Harley Quinn, obviously there's been a lot of debate lately about the alleged under-representation of female heroes um, in the Marvel Universe and some of the DC franchises. I'm curious for you guys how you feel about that, if you have any thoughts on that, and how shows like Arrow are going about redressing that balance. Um, that's, that's actually a really good question, because one thing that makes me so honored to be on this show is being able to do a justification of this character's arc as, as a female and as an empowered woman. Um, I mean, she just gets beaten down by, by everybody in her life, uh, whether it be the males or the females, just everybody in her life has just been lying to her, untrustworthy, all that. And she honed into something inside of that, like herself and is becoming what she is becoming. And uh, it's very, very amazing to be able to represent that. Um, and it's, I think a lot of the girls in our show have been pulling that stuff out really hard. Like Katie Cassidy's character has gone through so much and now has just come out the other end like a very strong woman. Um, and I have very high hopes for the future for, for women being empowered in, in television and in, in movies. Um, I think that Harley Quinn could be a great one as a like, crazy, sexy supervillain, but take it away from just you know her being sexy and actually just being strong and powerful. Um, and that's usually what should be pushed out there far more than pumping up the breasts and showing her ass. Like, let's actually show her mind or what she is physically capable of. Following on from that question, you, you saw the backlash against Mad Max Fury Road from a lot of people saying it was too feminist. I We've still got a long way to go, haven't we? I haven't seen it yet, but that made me so mad to hear that. I mean, I, I guess I have no, uh, I've never seen it. I don't have any opinion on it yet other than the fact that what is wrong with some guys out there saying that? Like, I just don't understand how it, how did the conversation all of a sudden just get reversed? Like, what? Now there's there's male activists all, all of a sudden? Like, okay, that's fine. It's great. Congratulations. <laughs> I recently went back and rewatched the pilot episode of Arrow, and it's amazing just how far each character has come. And I know that this season there was a flashback to when Ollie was supposedly still on the islands and he came and saw you yeah. and killed your drug dealer. <laughs> um, how was it playing a younger Thea again? Because, like, I mean, you've all had such big character arcs from episode one till the finale. Like. It's been, it been a, a huge arc, especially for, for Thea in season three. Um, but uh, really, going back was, was a bit uh, painful for me, to be honest, because I've... I mean, I, I don't blame people I, I, for typecasting. I understand it, I, but I just feel, felt like through a trajectory of my career, I was always typecasted as a little sister of somebody and then also a bitch mm -hmm. for a while or like some type of like rich girl wearing a school uniform. I mean, that was the exact same school uniform I wore in the MC. It was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> I felt really awkward about it, but it's fine. Um, so going back into that thing was just, it was just like, haven't I proven that, mm. that, I, I, that this is not who I am, that I should not be represented as that, but it was nice to be able to, to show. Um, it was an interesting contrast to see. Yeah, it was nice to be able to show the contrast between the two mm. um, and, and prove that, and also to show everybody the fact that I look way better with short hair than long hair. I, I think, <laughs> personally. Speaking of the your your former colleague, Ben McKenzie, reading Gotham. Have you watched the show? I do, do watch Gotham. Gotham. I watch Gotham all the time. It's actually pretty crazy how many people I've worked with that are attached to Gotham, now Legends of Tomorrow and The Flash. Like, I worked with Drew uh, yeah. Powell a bunch of times. Uh, Dominic Purcell I've worked with. Like, just kind of crazy, awesome uh, little small world we have up here, but it's it's amazing. Uh, I ran into him a few weeks ago, actually, at this, the upfronts. Um, and yeah, we were just chatting about it, how crazy it is. It's just uh, it's awesome. Well, this is your um, third CW show, obviously, Gossip Girl, VOC. What is it about the network? It's not just yourself. Obviously, Katie Cassidy came from Gossip Girl, Supernatural. What is it about the network that sort of keeps hold of all these like, young Hollywood actors? I don't know. I, they just like to, to use us. I'm not complaining about it whatsoever. I'm very happy to be gainfully employed whenever they, they ask for it. Um, I mean, this is definitely my favorite thing that they've ever asked for me to do. Um, and I'm absolutely honored to be a part of, of the CW kind of niche. I mean, if, if I fit that mold, keep me in that mold, guys. I'll, I'll take it happily. <laughs> in terms of your characters going to season four, uh, Thea and Katana are especially usually quite serious characters. We've been told that our season four is going to take on a lighter tone, much like The Flash. Can you guys put any details on what's going to happen with the darker characters like Thea and Katana going forward? 
They haven't really told me much. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But they're both very talented actresses, and they'll go with that flow, I think. Well, if, yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> if they were to take a lighter tone, where would you like to see your character go in, in that direction? Personally, I mean, this is all just personal opinion, because again, I have no idea what's happening in season four yet. I, like, literally no idea <clears throat> other than the fact that I'm going to be in it. That's all I know. <laughs> um, uh, I, I hope that we get to see some type of effect from the Lazarus Pit. I think that would be really awesome. Um, some type of just whatever, eh? whether it be good or, or bad. Um, and I, I hope that, you know, it, it, people are starting, like, I think that the stories are starting to come to a really like, cool, calming end almost, where everyone's drama is kind of being resolved. So maybe there is like you know a period of time where everyone can actually just be happy for a second, and then it'll probably get ruined in a couple episodes. But you talked already about the importance uh, for your characters to provide kind of interesting role models and stuff for people watching the show. I mean, Speedy appeared in one of like an iconic DC cover where he was caught doing drugs by uh, Green Arrow and the Green Lantern. I mean, how does how do you work that when you're kind of working on your characters and stuff that like these characters mean a lot to a lot of people and everything can. Um, it's, 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 it's very interesting because uh, a lot of the people come up to me and say, they like, you realize that uh, Roy Harper was supposed to be Speedy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's in one of the comics, but there's also another one where Mere Deirdre is Speedy. So, I mean, I hate to say I have done my research, and I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to this stuff, and I get, you know, people not thinking that, but um, it's, it's, it's interesting coming from the show because there's our writers wrote for the comics um, and they have a huge profound love for the stories um, and they don't want us to steer away from it but it's also difficult being on television being on a network and trying to mix the two together um, there's definitely certain things that are going to that are going to be lost a little bit um, but it's it's nice to be able to pull out those dots yeah. and prove uh, the actual stories in the pudding I guess I think yeah. what uh, what makes a hero also very interesting is their vulnerability that that's what makes them interesting to watch because they're I mean how how interesting would it be if a hero was just this hero all the time we would lose interest so mm -hmm. um, like you said like they're gonna do some some flawed things and you know that's that's great for the morality part of the story as like a cautionary aspect um, of what not to do and how we can learn from it especially as heroes uh, well, no. I'm going back to my friend's um, question about the drug issue. Um, in the flashback, um, it was shown that you were using drugs, but um, and in the comic book, it was like a big deal. Do you feel that um, in the show, it wasn't really like, given enough weight? Um, I, yes and no. I think that the fact that they showed it was admirable enough. Uh, I, I respect it as as a comic book lover. I am like I, I could take that. But I can understand people not thinking that it was enough, but the reasons why is because, again, <coughs> we work on the CW. We can't just be shoving needles in people's veins and stuff like that. Like, it's just not going to happen on the network. Um, but I think that, you know, it was nice how they brought it back around uh, this season. They just were a nice little refresher in, uh, in case, you know, people forgot how silly she was back in the day. There you go. There's a reminder um, of just, like, a bit of the her trajectory as, as that. And... Also, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's an interesting thing. It's hard to kind of go through it, though, you know. Thanks for watching. Why not subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the link on the screen now?